once again, one of our classic sounders reminds us that please pay attention. This is a program called Interesting Ideas. My name is Stan Houston. Very simply, we're just simply trying to help you make life and business better. It's just about that simple because with some interesting ideas, you'll meet interesting people. You come together and you'll gain some insight, perhaps some influence, be able to make an impact, and then have some good income. And income is not just money. It is the good incoming things that can come into your life. And we'd like to help you do that about 15 or 20 minutes every time we have a conversation. And we try and do it uh, mostly through the week. And uh, sometimes we just don't make it because that's the way the world works. Monday afternoon, you've had a busy, busy day, and uh, you're going to have a busy week, uh, particularly those of you who celebrate the uh, Christian tradition coming up. This is Holy Week, and uh, a good many of you will do that. And uh, also, the uh, Passover celebration is around this arena, and so those of us in the Jewish tradition, and I can say that in some respect, I am in that tradition too. And uh, the uh, symbol of give us freedom, give us freedom, give us freedom, <laughs> that came from the uh, Passover celebration. Uh, your day has gone okay, hopefully. And uh, tomorrow, it'll be interesting. Um, the whole world, I guess, will watch as... Uh, Donald Trump, uh, the former president of the United States, and uh, currently seeking a return to that office, uh, will be indicted for uh, what is seemingly a minor crime in the city of New York. And uh, I don't need to go into all the details. I will be just like you, an observer, and I will not be a commenter. Not now. Maybe 72 hours later afterwards. We don't talk about things until we know more about them. But today, I'd like to remind you that I uh, had a reminder. As one of my good mentors said, we don't always want or need educating, but we all need reminding. In the uh, Palm Sunday sermon, which commemorates when uh, Jesus uh, made his way into Jerusalem for the final week of his life, and the crowds uh, shouted, Hosanna. And the pastor reminded us that uh, that is oftentimes thought of as a praise call, but it actually has some origins where it is saying, help us, help us. We want help. <laughs> we want someone to... And this is what caught me in my own thinking. For years I've been teaching about the rescue idea. All good stories are rescue stories. And so I thought about that, hmm, could it be? Yeah, I remember that now. Hosanna is kind of a rescue story, a plea, rescue us. And that reminded me, and sure enough, I went back and found an old radio program that I had produced about rescue. And it was framed around when uh, the whole world was watching as uh, they were trying to rescue a group of uh, soccer team players in Thailand who had gotten stuck in a cave. And it was a, a terrible tragedy in the making. And they were trying to uh, rescue them. So with your permission, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sign off right now and say, uh, back to the past. Here's a program that I did some uh, some years ago, about Rescue Me. Here it goes. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas, and it goes back to a program which we call the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, and uh, the program is rolling right now. A very good Sunday evening to you. This has been quite a day. Obviously, hopefully, many of us took time to get ready for the week by doing what we're made for. We did worship. 
But throughout the entire drama of the day, what has happened is that we are seeing that that situation in Thailand where the uh, young soccer team and their coach have been trapped in an underwater cave for an, almost two weeks now, it appears that the danger continues. One rescuer has already died, and they are seeking to rescue the boys and their coach going forward through today, through tonight, and perhaps in the next few days. And we're all wondering, worrying, and thinking, and certainly praying, that this will be a successful rescue. But that got me to thinking, something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I'd like to share it with you just briefly on this Sunday evening. And could that be that when it comes right down to it, those of us who are entrepreneurs particularly, that we are really in the rescue business, and that every story that touches our hearts and moves us to action is oftentimes a rescue story. Well, with your permission, can I take just a few minutes on this Sunday evening, perhaps to get you ready for Monday morning in the marketplace, with a few thoughts about rescue time. Day by day, day by day, Thank you for your time. The T-C-E-N Global dot org. The T-C-E-N Global. T-C-E-N Global dot org. That's where we hang out. This is the Christian Entrepreneur Network, and we bring you this program. I'm Stan Houston, the host for the uh, podcast, the on-demand radio program, the Right Now Radio, the over-the-top radio program, which we call the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. And it's usually just a few minutes, maybe 12 to 20 minutes. By the way, take 20 minutes every day to learn something new. And when you do... It'll go much, much better for you. And we try to be that kind of a source of perhaps uh, engagement, entertainment, education, maybe even a little bit of transformation, and perhaps even to touch your heart with the things of the Spirit of the living God that will truly empower you to be more creative as an entrepreneur, as a Christian entrepreneur, as a Jesus-led entrepreneur. Those of you who know me and had some experience with my teaching know that I have for many years taught what I call the Sunday night meeting. And what I mean by that is usually your weekend has been fairly busy. Uh, certainly during the summer when there's all kinds of other activities going on. But as I say, usually uh, you take a little bit of Saturday morning to get caught up with the work. Then you need to make sure that you go into a period of a super rest sometimes called a Sabbath day. And that's where you take time to rest, perhaps to do a little art reflection, maybe some recreation, but not vocation, not any tough work, hard work. Take the day off. Then you do Sunday morning worship, and as that day begins to come to an end, why don't you uh, take time, perhaps to put on some music, light a candle, uh, get into a quiet place, perhaps with your Bible, with a notebook, and uh, think about how you're going to meet the marketplace tomorrow. So you do some praying, you do some planning, you do some purposing, you uh, put something to paper and pen, pencil and pen and paper, you write something down, you say a prayer, and then you retire for the evening, ready for the morning to come. So I've been teaching the Sunday night meeting for some time, and uh, hopefully that's become a little bit of your discipline. Well, it's all come together because not only have we uh, seen throughout the day the story of the rescue attempt in Thailand, but uh, on, uh, on Friday, Hugh Welchel, my friend, a colleague, uh, a guy who really likes to help us understand well, how we can put our faith, work, and economics together, he is a leader of the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. 
And he wrote an article, which I guess was a past article, you know, kind of on Friday. We uh, do the best, the blast from the past. And it was called Art, Vocation, and Why We Hunger for Redemption Stories. And uh, I'm going to encourage you to check that out. Art, Vocation, and Why We Hunger for Redemption Stories. And it's the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. And uh, why don't you check that out at T-I-F-W-E dot org. T-I-F-W-E dot org. I think you'll learn some fun things there and some things that will get you to thinking. And I may even ask uh, Hugh to come on and tell us a little bit more about that. But what I want to do today is to say it's more than that. We hunger for redemption stories because it is really a part of who we are, particularly as Christian entrepreneurs. You see, we want to rescue things. What we really are made for is to rescue things. And I would really point out that many times the stories that we love are rescue stories. Maybe you would call them redemption stories because that's kind of a rescue thing. Those of us who love dogs, some of our favorite dogs are what? Rescue dogs. There's something really unique about the power of that word rescue. What I'm going to encourage you to do is to start watching for stories. And you as an entrepreneur begin to think about how you can tell stories about rescuing things. How you can view your work. Now, please keep in mind, most of the work we do, we're dealing with people who've got problems. <laughs> They've got pains. There's things that have gone wrong. There's things that they just don't want to have in their lives. On the other hand, there are hopes and dreams and opportunities for something better. And they're trying to rescue from that bad thing and perhaps to reel in and rescue before they lose that opportunity for a good thing. So rescue becomes kind of the divine mission, not only of the living God, but for those of us in the marketplace. We're in the business of rescuing. That's what we were made for. We were made to create. We were made to repair. We were made to rescue things. And the kind of stories that bring about a rescue scene are those that uh, touch our heart, move our spirits, and often move us into action. Touch our hearts, move our spirit, and uh, move us into action. And if you don't do that, much of what you're doing will not work. I'm reading a book. It's a nice book. It's a good book. It's full of information. I mean, it's really full of stuff. And the uh, writer has done a good job. But you know what? I can't get into it. Because it's got good stuff, but there's nothing there that's touching me. It's not moving me. It's not touching my heart. Oh, it's full of good stuff. But there's nothing there that is touching me and engaging me and bringing me in to his story, to the rescue attempt that we all want to be a part of. So I want that to just sit on your head for a while. And then I'd like to tell you a little bit about our response when uh, we really are confronted with a rescue story by just going back to a simple movie of a number of years ago that the whole deal was about a rescue. And I think it might begin to illustrate why Hugh is right and why perhaps I'm even right and why the Word of God is right when we are in the rescue business. Well, we're back. Well, you know, if you start watching, start noticing, look at how we love, how we are made for redemption, for rescue, for 
bringing back to life, resuscitating, resurrection. Things die, things go wrong, things go bad, things are lost, and we want to experience rescue. A number of years ago, perhaps you remember the film. And it was based, of course, on something really true. Remember Apollo 13? That's right. That was the mission to the moon. And all of a sudden, something went drastically wrong. And just as the lunar module was going on the way to the moon, it became a death trap. Everything went wrong. Wow. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen the film, to do so. And many of you have. In fact, I know that many of you have seen it many times. Because you have somewhat the similar response that I do. And I won't go into all the details. You can go into it. But it was an incredible, heroic attempt. The odds were enormous. Yet, all of the things of teamwork, the best science and knowledge and engineering, the sense of intensity, all those things that bring together some of the best things of the human spirit that God has given us. And they jury-rig. They do this. They do that. And they hope. And they pray. And the families hope and pray. And they circle around. And now they're coming back. Can they make it? Can they make it? Can they make it? And remember, remember, they are coming back. But will they be able to survive the re-entry into the atmosphere? Because if they get it wrong, even the slightest thing wrong, they're going to burn up. It's going to go down in a fiery blaze. And all of that work that has gotten them from where the wreck took place to back where the rescue is almost there could all be for naught if it doesn't go right. And if you recall, and I still get worked up when I think about it, uh, the thing is that when they start going through the flames of reentry, all communication, radio communication will be lost. And it will be lost for about three minutes. And they won't know whether they have survived until after that three minutes. And you remember the scene. <sighs> the communication stops. One minute. Two minutes. It's almost time. Three minutes. Three minutes, three minutes, and nothing. Three and a half. And now their worst fears are beginning to come to mind again. Three thirty, four minutes. And now you begin to see that obviously it has failed. Something has gone wrong, and they have died in that fiery crash. And they won't make it. And then just as that's about to sink in and destroy them, all of a sudden, there is the crackling sound of the radio. And they have broken free. They are in planet Earth's atmosphere. And they are alive. And the parachute is coming out. And they are coming home. They have been rescued. And I, uh, you know, we tear up. We start to cry. It just moves us deeply that they have been rescued. I simply point that out to you as a way, perhaps, for you to think about this week. You know, there's a very good chance that a lot of your work, in very small ways, is rescue work. View it as holy work. View it as something that really God has enabled you and empowered you to do. And as you're thinking of things God would call you to do, please keep in mind, 
God delights in the joy of people who rescue each other, one another. As an entrepreneur, as a man or a woman of God, you are called to create things, to fix things, to repair things, to uh, move things, and you're called to rescue things. May it go well for you to do just that this week. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. Well, there you go. Just a little uh, thought for Sunday night. I hope it has gone well for you. I look forward to you joining us again as we start up the weekend, Monday through Thursday, sometimes into Friday. We'll see how it goes. And we'll see what themes come to us as we've got a number of things that will be helpful for you. Remember, here is where you can learn something new every day. And if you learn something new every day, every day, take 15 or 20 minutes to learn something new, I guarantee you, it will go well for you. Best and blessings, and bye for now. Mm-hmm.